Good morning. I'm Jeff Flax, the President and CEO of Hartford HealthCare, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm very excited today for us to share a story uh, and introduce you to, to one of our patients, uh, Maureen Schiller. Maureen is an 81-year-old woman from Niantic uh, who had a significant and very complex surgery uh, here within Hartford HealthCare at Hartford Hospital in April. And, and I want to bring attention to the fact, and we've said throughout this pandemic, uh, we never closed. Hospitals across Connecticut, across the country, continued to provide emergent surgeries uh, at all times of the day, under all circumstances. And it really is one of the great recognitions to the healthcare heroes uh, that have been able to stand ready to take care of people when those emergent circumstances presented themselves. And today we're gonna to share one of those stories that's a really perfect example. And it indicates the readiness, uh, the, the courage, the bravery of the team, and the courage and bravery of our patients who trusted us in this process. Uh, and as we now have emerged to a different place within this pandemic, uh, you know, we've said all along, the hospitals are amongst the very safest places to be within our community. And the fact that we were able to do these types of very complex, emergent, involved cases during the time period of March and April uh, really just demonstrates today as we move into late May and into June, uh, the, the, the real safe procedures we have in place across all of our systems uh, and the fact that we have these capabilities. So today I'm gonna to introduce you to, to one of our surgeons, Dr. Tom DiVingracia, who is our leader in vascular surgery. Uh, and I'm gonna ask Dr. DiVingracia to share with you Maureen's circumstances, uh, what really is an example of, uh, thank God Maureen is doing miraculously well, uh, and to really explain uh, how this proceeded and, to lend, and then listen to Maureen herself and allow you to ask questions to both Dr. DiVingracia uh, and, and Maureen, and then I will wrap this, this up today and answer any questions that you might have. So if I may, let me introduce Dr. Tom DiVingracia, head of vascular surgery, Hartford Hospital. <clears throat> uh, good morning, uh, my name is Tom DiVingracia. I'm the chief of vascular and vascular surgery here at Harvard Hospital, and uh, I want to share a, uh, a great story uh, about a remarkable woman who I had the pleasure of uh, taking care of, unfortunately, during the height of the uh, pandemic. Um, Maureen Schiller is an 81-year-old uh, female who has known vascular disease, who uh, presented in the late April with what we call um, uh, acute on chronic mesenteric ischemia, and that means she was not getting enough blood flow to her intestine. Uh, Unfortunately, this was an urgent, if not emergent, situation which required uh, um, uh, an intervention. Uh, she um, was admitted on the 24th of um, April and uh, late in the evening and then early on the, uh, I'm sorry, that was 23rd, and then on early on the 24th underwent our surgical procedure, which required um, her to have, uh, ultimately have two stents placed in her mesenteric arteries to restore blood flow to her, her intestine. Um, she uh, ultimately was discharged on April 30th. And um, again, this happened during the, the height of the pandemic and some of the aspects of her care were, were challenging, but um, uh, Maureen and, uh, did, did extraordinarily well and uh, fortunately is, is joining us here today. Um, Maureen, how are you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you very well. Okay, I'm doing fine. You look lovely, uh, and I see all I see all the pictures of your uh, grandchildren behind you. How many How many grandchildren do you have, Maureen? Thirteen. Oh wow! Well, that's that's great. So you're home and uh, doing well and, and feeling well. I am. I'm I'm walking. I'm eating a normal diet. I even gained a couple of pounds. Uh, excellent. I know, I'm sure your husband's keeping close track of that and has a, an elaborate graph to make sure that uh, oh, yeah. we are, we are we're yeah, doing things is. properly. I hear that. I, I, I'm sure you do. Um, so, so you're feeling well and uh, have, you, have you had a chance to see any of your grandchildren since you've been home? No, um, I, I, I've seen them through FaceTime. Right. Okay, well, that's good. But I have not been able to interact with them mainly because of the coronavirus. Right, right. Well, that's, that's, that's true. So if you don't mind, uh, Maureen, if you could share a little bit from your perspective, your story. Obviously, um, we know it was 
the whole process was very nerve wracking and, and to have it happen in the middle of, of this uh, pandemic, um, you know, what, 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 uh, what, what can you share about uh, how uh, you were able to get through all of this? Well, I struggled a lot with the pain and tried to ignore it because I did not want any part of the hospital. Right, right. Um, it, with, a, with the coronavirus out there, I didn't want to go anywhere near it. And we did hunker down. Right. We did not go anywhere. We had a vacation canceled. And it was, um, it was a tough time. Mm -hmm. But I finally got to the point that I could not deal with the pain anymore. Right. And our kids were all over us to go to the emergency room. And I said, no. Our daughter finally called l and and asked them what the procedure was at the emergency room. This was on Easter Sunday. And she talked to a lovely nurse who told her that what the procedure was. And at the end of the conversation promised to meet me when I arrived or if I arrived. And when I got there, they took care of me almost immediately. Mm -hmm. I had a couple of tests, blood tests, EKG. I had a CAT scan done. And then they sent me home with instructions to call uh, a GI doctor mm -hmm. and they gave me medication. So I called Dr. Ouellette um, from New London mm -hmm. And he just did a virtual meeting with us, with with Zoom. Right. And uh, the next I knew, I was I was being taken in to have a colonoscopy, uh, endoscopy. Right. And Dr. Lett was having a hard time figuring out why I could not eat, and I had so much pain. Right. Well, I think he did a great yeah, job discovering. I was him we're not right. Right. Go ahead. So when you finally got here to to Hartford Hospital, as you remember, we had to your your care was was actually uh, in the Bone and Joint Institute, which was not a, a usual situation. But to protect you, um, you know, we we had to give you your care over there, and I was uh, uh, very impressed with how we were able to adapt and, and still provide you with. Uh, with good care, uh, even though we had to adjust things to keep uh, you and, and uh, all of our patients as safe as possible during this trying time. That worked out beautifully. Yes, yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a beautiful hospital, and they, they went beyond what I would have expected. It was tough going in without, without my husband. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, but but I knew I was in good hands, and that made it easier to go to the hospital right. as much as I didn't want to go. Well, we really appreciate you having the trust in, in us and in our team here. Um, uh, obviously, the, 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 the staff over um, uh, at that other part of our hospital deserves a lot of credit, but uh, you deserve the most credit, uh, and I'm so glad that you are uh, doing well after this uh, challenging set of circumstances. Yes, I am. And I have you to thank for it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, and I've got to tell you, Dr. D. Yes. Still refers to you as Dr. Divine Grace. <laughs> well, that's very sweet. All right. Well, thank you for, for taking the time this morning to, uh, to talk with us, Maureen. I'm so happy you're doing well. Uh, I want to. Thank you. I, I want to turn things back over to. to Oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I guess there are some some reporters on the line. So, do they have? Is there any questions uh, for for myself or, or Maureen? Okay. If not, I'm gonna uh, turn things back over to uh, to to Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen, so much for, for sharing your story and for your family and for joining uh, us today. Thank you. Okay, that's, that's easy compared to what you did for me. 
Oh, thank you, and thank you, Dr. DiVangracia. You know, Marine's story is a living proof and example uh, of, of the amazing ingenuity that was put forth in hospitals during this time period. Uh, you know, as Dr. DiVangracia described, we, we took our freestanding bone and joint institute, effectively a separate hospital tunnel connected on the Hartford Hospital campus, uh, and redeployed it to take care of patients who were not suspected to be COVID positive. Uh, who needed these emergent operations. Uh, and we put special precautions in place. When Dr. DiVangrassi and the team would have been operating, uh, they would have had their normal surgical mask, an N95 mask, as well as a, a um, face shield, and a whole series of precautions about the circulators and how many people would enter the room and under what circumstance. Uh, so I'm, I'm extraordinarily proud uh, of, of these examples, the difference we're making for people, for their lives, uh, in this process and, and what we've been able to do. Uh, and it just underscores, again, going forward, uh, all of the safety and security precautions that have been put forth in our institutions today uh, to ensure that nobody uh, stays home. And thankfully, in Maureen's example, her daughter urged her ultimately to come forward and go to the emergency department. But I will share a very real example. I was in uh, uh, one of our hospitals rounding uh, within the last two weeks and one of our nurses stopped me in the emergency department and said to me, listen, you need to do a better job of telling people they need to come to the hospital. And I said, really? I said, no, well, we are, we're working on that. And she goes, no, you need to do better. And she goes, let me tell you why. And she described the patient who had come into the hospital uh, who had been experiencing stroke-like symptoms for about three days. The family was evaluating those symptoms over those period, period of time, and eventually the symptoms got worse and the patient became more incapacitated uh, and the nurse felt so terribly because she said to me, had that patient come in routinely within that first 24-hour window that normally would happen, this patient, she would have been la you know, left fully restored of all her capabilities. Uh, and instead, she left with great deficits uh, by virtue of having that delay in care. Uh, and the delays in care that have been in our communities in a number of its situations are affecting people uh, in very significant ways. And I want to urge everybody uh, that the, all hospitals across Connecticut are working together, we're coordinated, uh, we're putting all the necessary precautions in place to ensure that we can take care of everyone when they need that care, when the, matters, when, when the moment matters most. Uh, and I'm extremely confident in all of the safety provisions that have been uh, initiated. So again, thank you very much. If, if you have any more questions for, for Dr. DiVangrassi or for, that I can answer, we would uh, be pleased to do so. Very good, thank you.